Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining me. Hey, it's Sunday. I'm in my office. Why the hell am I in my office on a Sunday? Well, it's because I've been doing phone consultations with a bunch of you around the country, all related to wide open triggers that you may have purchased from Big Daddy Unlimited. Now, first thing first, if you are in that category, I want you to take a deep breath. I know you're thinking that everything is really, really bad and you've gotten yourself in a lot of trouble. If that were the case, I would tell you, I do not think that is the case. I will tell you that I think if you are in this category, you actually fall into one of three subcategories. And what we're gonna do today is go through the same information that I've been going through on the phone with a few of my viewers who are in this situation so that you can get some ideas of what you've gotten yourself into and what you probably should do now. So today, let's spend a few very important minutes and talk about the three stages of trigger trouble and what you should do about it. Okay, so what we're talking about today is version 2.0 of Operation Reticent Recall, which now is apparently ATF's ability to connect the dots between wide open triggers that were sold through the website Big Daddy Unlimited and the end user. Months ago, when I was we were going through this the first time, I was telling anybody who had purchased these items or any item off of Big Daddy Unlimited that the likelihood that ATF was going to contact you was virtually zero because I had not spoken to a single person around the country that had any correspondence with ATF that had purchased from Big Daddy. That all changed a couple of weeks ago, and now all of a sudden I'm doing phone call after phone call after phone call. So clearly the ATF has in some way accumulated that data. Now, I wanna make this clear. Do I believe that Big Daddy gave the ATF this data? No, I actually believe quite the opposite. I think that there was a reason that we never had ATF contacting people that had purchased from Big Daddy because I don't think that they were cooperating in any way, shape, or form. I think the data has probably come from a third-party source, likely one of the shipping companies that they may use. But more importantly, if you purchased one of these triggers from Big Daddy, you are really gonna fall into one of three categories and I wanna give you advice on what you should do if you are in any one of those three categories. The three categories that we're gonna be talking about today is number one, you have one of these triggers, it's still in operable condition, but you have no correspondence from ATF, okay? The second one is you had one of these triggers, but you already destroyed it, but you have no correspondence from ATF. Okay, and then the third category is you have or had one of these triggers and ATF has already contacted you. What do we do in any one of those situations? Let's start right at the top, which is you have one of these triggers, it's still in operable condition, but you have no correspondence from ATF. What we are recommending here is exactly what we were recommended the first go around. If the trigger's in a firearm, pull it out of the gun right now. If it's not in a gun, that's great, cut it up. Photo document the destruction, whether you smash it up, cut it up, use a blowtorch to it, I don't really care, but photo and video document the destruction of the trigger. Since you have received no correspondence from ATF, that trigger, we have no reason to believe, has any evidentiary value. This is no different than you deciding to destroy any other piece of personal property, which you have the right to do. It's not a good use of money, but you have the right to do it. So we do recommend that the, tr the remnants of the trigger just be tossed away at that point. Now, what should you do with the data? The data needs to be securely stored. I don't mean just leaving it on your phone, okay? You need to do a backup, whether it's with your uh, cellular service or through some type of external backup, or what I think is even a smarter way to do it is to form a relationship with an attorney, transmit that data in confidence to the attorney, provide them with consent to disclose that data to ATF in the event that ATF contacts you about this trigger. But Bottom line is, is if you have one of these triggers and you don't have any correspondence from ATF, if you want to get out in front of this, cut the damn thing up, video or photograph it, preferably both, and then have that data securely stored. So in the event you are contacted by ATF, you are ready to deal with this. Okay, now the second one is, is you have or had one of these triggers. You already destroyed it because you got spooked the first go around when we were doing videos on this, but ATF has not responded. Now. If you have the remnants of that trigger, I would strongly recommend that you photo document the remnants of that trigger and then dispose of the trigger. Again, ATF has not put you on notice yet that this trigger has any sort of evidentiary value. Now, if you have already destroyed it and disposed of it, please understand that if ATF does contact you, and I had many people on the first go around with this with FRTs, that the only way you're gonna get your name kind of crossed off that list is you're gonna have to sign a declaration under penalty of perjury stating what you did with that trigger. And I want you to be very clear about this. 
under no circumstances do I want any of you submitting any declaration under penalty or perjury to the ATF without assistance of counsel, period, okay? Um, you're probably not in a lot of trouble on this trigger, but if you make a, a misstatement, even an accidental misstatement, on a document that's signed under penalty of perjury to a federal agent, you, we all know where the federal government can go with that. So you absolutely, positively, and without a doubt, need assistance of counsel. Now, if you haven't been contacted by ATF right now, do you need that attorney on board right this second? No. Once ATF contacts you, you will need to get that attorney on board. But if you want to get out in front of it now, this might be the right time to start consulting with attorneys. I'm not suggesting you have to consult just with Washington Gun Law. There are plenty of attorneys in your local jurisdictions that can assist you with this as well. The final category is this. You have one of these triggers and ATF has already contacted you. Okay, the only alteration I want you to make to that trigger in that case, because now we've been placed on notice that this trigger may have evidentiary value. So if it's in a firearm, get it the hell out of the firearm. Okay, whatever other condition though that trigger is in, it's going to have to remain in that condition. We cannot be cutting up or destroying a trigger after ATF has put us on notice. I do not want to start creating accusations that we were destroying evidence. Again, I've said that you're probably not in any trouble here right now. Their beef is not with the end user. Their beef is with the manufacturer. But all of a sudden we start acting like we're destroying or tampering evidence. Now we're creating more wrinkles that weren't there to begin with. Now listen, if you're in this situation right now, we are strongly, strongly and highly recommending that you contact counsel and get them on board right away. Have I had individuals who chose to deal with the ATF on their own without the assistance of counsel? Yes, I have. Have there been any bad or horror stories to come from it? No, there hasn't. If there would have been, I would have done a video on it already. However, this is a federal agency that is looking at you as possibly being involved in criminal conduct. This is not like the publisher's clearinghouse showing up at your door with a big check for $100,000, okay? This is the ATF. So if you have been contacted by ATF, I do recommend that you contact counsel, local counsel, national counsel, doesn't really matter. Contact somebody who knows what's going on and have them assist you then in contacting and serving as your communication liaison between yourself and the ATF to conclude this investigation as fast as possible. Okay, and then finally, I know some of you in the comment section down below is gonna be like, this is ridiculous, it is, this is unconstitutional, it is, this is tyranny, it is, all of that, okay? And then some of you are also gonna say, I will not comply, and that is fine, okay? At Washington Gun Law, we never tell you how to think, we just give you all the stuff to think about, but I want you to think about this, okay? Possession of an unlawful machine gun is a federal felony, it is punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a $5,000 fine under 26 United States Code Section 5845. Now, while I think there are many hills that are worth dying on in this current onslaught of our Second Amendment rights, I'm not certain that the wide open trigger, the forced reset trigger, or the solvent trap hill are the hills worth dying on, but that's me and you are certainly entitled to live the life you so choose. The final thing, and this is important, if you are in this position, everybody, take a deep breath. I know you may be thinking that you've got a lot of trouble ahead. You don't. You have some mild inconveniences ahead. You may have to deal with a lawyer. The likelihood that any one of you is going to actually end up charged with a crime or indicted based upon my experience as it sits today is incredibly remote. I have not seen a single instance of it yet. Listen, you may have more questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that's okay. All of that information is right there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.